Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this lecture is on snapshot diagrams showing acceleration. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Because this is going to involve drawing, I would highly recommend you're doing this on paper for this one rather than on uh, a Google Doc. So remember that, uh, or summarizing from our previous video or videos, um, acceleration is a vector and it really looks at how fast is velocity changing with respect to time, or in other words, change in velocity per time. Now, since it's a vector, we can show its direction using a positive or a negative, um, where in this video, we'll assume to the right is showing positive and to the left is showing negative. You could flip that if you want to do, it wouldn't really matter. You just need to kind of define it for uh, your reader. If a problem ever tells you what to assume is positive and which direction is negative, you need to follow that. You can't just create your own if it's already been provided for you. So looking at this image here, we can see that the snail is speeding up in both of these images because the spacing is increasing. Um, we know that it's speeding up uh, because of that spacing increasing, but also that tells us that its velocity and its acceleration are in the same direction. So that means if we know what direction it's moving and we know that it is speeding up, we also know the direction of its acceleration. So in this case, uh, the velocity would be in the positive direction. Therefore, and since it's speeding up, we know that the acceleration is also in the positive direction. Here in this image, we know it's moving to the left. We can say its velocity is in the negative direction. Since it's speeding up based on that spacing, we also know that the acceleration is in the negative direction. On the flip side, if we see something slowing down, then we know that velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions. So here we can see the snail is moving to the right. That's a positive velocity, but we know it's slowing down based on that spacing. So we know the acceleration is negative or to the left. Here we can see that the snail is moving to the left. We say that's the negative direction. We know we can see based on the spacing, the snail is slowing down. Um, therefore, we know the acceleration is in the positive direction or to the right. They're just opposites. Simple way to remember, anytime things are speeding up, acceleration is in the same direction as velocity. Anytime things are slowing down, acceleration is in the opposite direction. If you see something changing direction, that means the acceleration is uh, kind of at a right angle or at an angle to it. So let's get into drawing snapshot diagrams. For this one, this first one, we're gonna draw a snapshot diagram showing a snail starting from rest and accelerating at a rate of two meters per second squared to the right. For each snapshot diagram, you need to show spacing, timestamps, velocity vectors and values, and the acceleration vectors and values. And it's gonna be important that we organize our information in a cohesive and clear manner. So that's what this video is gonna help with. So first things first, if we're doing a snapshot diagram, we wanna go ahead and draw in our snapshots with the correct spacing. We're showing that the spacing of the snail is increasing because we know that the snail is accelerating. Next, we want to add in our timestamps. So we always start with a time of zero, and then our first snapshot would go at one second, second snapshot at two seconds. The timestamps could actually be at 0.1 and 0.2 or two and four seconds. It doesn't really matter what the timestamps are at unless it's specified. Um, the only difference here is going to be, it will affect uh, how much the velocity is changing each time. So I like to choose one second timestamps because it just makes everything a little bit easier. Then we're gonna start by adding the initial conditions, AKA the given info. So that info is right here. So we can see the initial velocity is zero. I like to put a dot there to show that there is no velocity, but that I didn't just leave it blank. We need to show the uh, velocity value here of zero meters per second and the acceleration value of two meters per second squared with an arrow up here. Now it's gonna be important that if we're um, dealing with uh, an acceleration that's kind of small, like, well actually, regardless of what the acceleration is, um, that whatever size arrow we choose, that we allow enough space to build on and make bigger arrows later on. So don't make a two um, size arrow like super long. You just wanna make it kind of a nice small to medium size. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what the new velocity is. Well, since acceleration, um, it, or sorry, not what the new velocity is, but what the accelerations are. Since it's accelerating at a rate of two meters per second squared, we're going to assume that's constant acceleration. So for each of these snapshots, we're gonna go ahead and write down the acceleration value of two, and we're gonna draw an arrow. Now you need to make sure the arrow is the same size as the previous one so that we can show that the acceleration is consistent. 
I like to do the acceleration vectors first because they're usually pretty easy. In this class, we tend to keep constant acceleration or no acceleration. So we can go ahead and draw those in. And then that also sets up a scale for how big I'm going to make things. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that size arrow of two right here, and I'm going to add it to my initial velocity to get a size two velocity because literally acceleration is the change in velocity per time or in other words, two meters per second gained each second. So we draw that first one in, and then we can add that same size value onto the front of here to get this one right here. Now, if I'm looking at this last one, um, I should be able to tell that this one is twice as big as this one, um, and that this one is twice as big as this one, basically because this is four and each of these are two. So again, we're keeping a uh, consistent scaling in all of this, and we can show that the velocity is increasing. So here we have our complete snapshot diagram. Notice that I kept the uh, velocity vectors near the velocity values, and I kept the acceleration vectors near the acceleration values, and I made it very clear which information goes with which. You don't want to muddle them all together because um, when we're assessing you on this, we need to be able to clearly tell what the acceleration is or that you understand what the acceleration and the velocity are and are able to communicate it clearly. All right, let's go through another one a little bit faster for a scenario where a snail is slowing down. So we're going to draw a snapshot diagram showing a snail with an initial velocity of 4 meters per second to the right and an acceleration of 1 meter per second squared to the left. Since that acceleration is to the left, or that means we're going to have it be a negative value, but the, po the velocity will be positive because it's to the right. As always, we need spacing, timestamps, uh, the velocity vectors and values, and the acceleration vectors and values. So let's start by drawing our snapshots. So first we draw our snapshots of something slowing down, so the spacing should be decreasing. Then we'll add in our timestamps. We can see here that it starts at zero, and then one and two it shows us kind of the uh, direction things are going. That's especially important because uh, if we had something like a ball or a square here, we wouldn't know what direction it was facing. With the snail, we can tell what direction it's pointing, but that's not always the case. Next, we're going to add in our initial conditions. Here I'm showing that the acceleration is negative um, and it's to the left. So again, showing this vector and these vectors, this one should be about one fourth as big as this one, or alternatively, the velocity should be four times bigger than the acceleration because this is one and this is four. Now for uh, the next bit, we're going to add in the acceleration. So go ahead and do that. That looks something like this, where the acceleration stays the same, always negative one. And then we're going to use that to create our new velocity vectors, where each time this velocity vector is going to shrink by whatever the equivalent of one is. So about this much each time. So the next one should be about this big right here. And so that gives us this. And then we subtract again, and we should see that this one um, is a little bit smaller. Just a quick check for your scaling. This vector, since it's two, and this one is four, this one should be about half as big as this one, or you can think of this as twice as big as the other one. So it's again a nice to go and double check it. I often will use a pencil and just kind of line it up next to the vector and hold my thumb about how big it is and then do a quick comparison to make sure it's about the right size. You can also, if you want to get really technical, use a ruler um, to do this as well. That's it for this one. Three more bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on any Google Forms.